The Ascar ATED is part of Ascar's budget lineup, so it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the FRA series and the SQA series have but also it is a lot cheaper than any of those telescopes. It can also be used for visual use, but since this is primarily aimed to be an astrophotography telescope, I would recommend getting one of the reducers or flatteners with it as well. So those will increase the field of view and they'll also correct the stars um, around the outer edges of the image, uh, except for the 1x flattener, which will just improve the stars near the edges, uh, but will leave the field of view as it is. So I spent some time testing this telescope out under the stars. So let's go to the computer and take a look at the results. For my testing, I was using the ASCAR 0.7x reducer, so that brings the telescope down from f7 to f4.9, so I can collect a lot more data quickly, and that reducer also improves the quality of the stars near the edges. So if you look at the top left here, stars are pretty good. At the bottom left, pretty good. And then same for the right side. So stars are pretty good across the frame, not absolutely perfect at the edges of this APS-C sensor that I was using, but quite good and also very sharp. And I don't notice any issues with chromatic aberration. So it performed very well here. Uh, but if we look at the very edges here, we look at any bright star near the edges of the frame, um, I do notice uh, this little bit of, um, well, it's called aperture vignetting. Uh, that's because the light is being cut off a little bit at the back uh, because the rear aperture isn't wide enough to let all the light uh, hit the entire sensor. Uh, so you'll notice this tiny bit of flaring here on some of the really bright stars uh, but again not really much of an issue and it won't prevent you from getting good images uh, so if you look at this star you can just about notice it a little bit but on in any of the fainter stars it's not noticeable now light fall off is not too much of an issue you might notice the edges are darker than the center uh, but if we do a little bit of uh, testing over here So looking at the values up here, the corners are only about 25% darker than the very center. So that's that's pretty good performance. Uh, I don't really have any complaints about the light fall off. Uh, flat frames will completely correct that as you can see. So this was, um, this is a single frame just corrected with flat frames, which completely correct the vignetting. Uh, now, if we look at some of the stacked images, uh, this is one of the stacked images of uh, this is the iris nebula and uh, it'll give us a better idea of what the corners look like if we use uh, aberration inspector so let's take a look at this one and full size okay so you can see center stars are perfect edges with the 0.7 reducer pretty good stars are pretty round uh, and again it has a very minor amount of flaring on the bright stars near the corners uh, which is again not really an issue and this is another image that I had taken uh, so again uh, this is just stacked without any processing and then this will give you a good idea of the field of view. So with the 0.7 reducer, you can fit the entire Cygnus loop in here. So that's, that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at some of the processed images to see what we can actually get. Now this is after processing and this was taken with the 2600 MC and this is 2 hours and 40 minutes of data in total from my Bortle 6 to 7 location. So I'm not at a dark site or anything I image from the city uh, but despite that I mean I was able to get some really good data um, you know using this telescope and yeah, after Blur Exterminator, stars are pretty much perfect. No issues at all there. If you're just getting started or you're just looking for something that doesn't break the bank, I mean, you can get images like this still with this scope. And I'm, I'm very happy with this image, especially considering it was just few hours from my light polluted location. And this is NGC 6823. This is an emission nebula. And this was imaged using the... Um, Optolong Alpara filter and here it is zoomed in at a hundred percent and then this is a broadband image and uh, this is the iris nebula 
So again, lots of dust and gas captured. This is three and a half hours. Um, so for most of these images, it's a couple of hours of data uh, from uh, from the city. So uh, I'm sure I could improve on these from a dark site, uh, but it does show you what you can accomplish even with a very cheap doublet refractor. Yeah, so overall uh, for the price, I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, I think for anyone who's uh, trying to move up from a camera lens or a C-Star or something like that, uh, and just get better images than that, then I think this is a, a pretty good viable option for them. If you do want better mechanical and optical quality, then you can move on to one of the more expensive higher end models uh, like the SCAR FRA series and the SQA series, uh, but they are quite a bit more expensive. So the build quality on this is quite a bit of a step down from the SCAR FRA series and the SQA series, which I've used in the past, but the scope is entirely made of metal and the construction is pretty good. The dual speed focuser is perfectly adequate and worked very well. I didn't have any complaints at all about that. And the dew shield can be taken off and reversed so it'll be even more compact for travel. So the build quality on it is primarily where Ascar had to cut some corners to keep the cost down. Uh, but I mean the build quality is still a lot better than some of the older uh, ATEDs that we used to have on the market. So if you do decide to buy this scope be sure to use the link in the description of this video as that supports this channel at absolutely no cost to you. And if you have any questions at all be sure to post them in the comments and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks again for watching and clear skies.